So what is going on guys? It's Triple G here back with another Wonderlands video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about this pet build, this companion build, which is very, very good in the Chaos Chamber. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week and otherwise, let's get straight into this video. So let's talk about the strengths of this build first. It's an absolute mobbing machine and it will do most of the work for you. It's incredibly easy to build, incredibly easy to find the gear for, and once you have it, it's actually incredibly easy to activate. So let's talk about the skill tree first. So we're going to be mixing the Graveborn and the Spore Warden tree, and we're going to be capstoning the Graveborn tree. The action skill we're going to be using is actually from the Spore Warden's tree, and there is a reason for this, and we will get onto that in a little while. But first of all, let's go through the skill points. We're going to be putting two points early on into Mortal Vessel for health and magic efficiency. And then we're going to put in three points into Faithful Thralls. Now, this is a critical skill because this is where our damage multipliers start. For every companion we have out, we will deal increased damage. So we will deal 9% per companion. We're going to have two companions at base. And then I'm going to show you a way to get as many companions as possible. We're then going to put three into harvest. This is a kill skill. Companions deal bonus dark magic again for a duration. This will stack twice for 24 seconds and it is 18% extra damage, which is nice. We're going to put five points into dark pact here, leaning into that dark magic, getting that all the way up to 20%. We're going to have five points into stain of the soul. The Fate Maker spells deal bonus dark magic damage. Again, just leaning into the skill, getting an extra 20% there. And then a critical, critical piece of the skill tree, which is the Dark Hydra. So every time that we get a kill, we will have a chance to summon a Dark Hydra. These guys absolutely destroy everything. They are very, very good. The more kills you get, the more chance of the Dark Hydras. The other Hydras can spawn Hydras and it just kind of extrapolates up and gives you a ton of damage, which is why it's absolutely brilliant for mobbing. We're going to put a point into Punishment to give a chance for a double shot from our Demilich. Two points over in Ascension here, which is a kill skill to give us some more health and spell damage. One point into Lord of Edges here. This will give us more damage and damage reduction if our health does actually drop. And then we are going to capstone here. Casting a spell automatically activates all of the Fate Maker's kill skills. This is brilliant for bossing. Absolutely essential because we're going to be using a spell that fires out the Hydra. We instantly get all our kill skills. We get the possibility of a Dark Hydra spawning straight away, which will increase our damage even further. And at the end of the day, it's more Hydras out on the field, which is always a good thing. Then we're going to move over to the Spore Warden. So I do go fully down when I am le leveling up all the way down Graveborn and then switch over to Spore Warden. I have five points in here plus two from my class mod, which give us extra companion health and extra companion damage. We then have a full five points to give our companions critical hit chance up to 50%, which is very, very good. We have four points in here for ability damage, taking us up to 28% ability damage. There is a reason why we were looking at ability damage and I will talk about that in a little while. We're going to have a single point into Medicinal Mushroom. Now, you can not take this point if you want and put it into Ability Damage, but I promise you now, those Elemental Puddles in the Chaos Chamber will get you and your Mushroom will get you out of jail. Then we're going to have three points into Windrunner, which is a kill skill, which will give us bonus movement speed and fire rate. And finally, three points into Thrill of the Hunt. This will mean that Gun Critical Hits grant the Companion extra damage. This is for 10 seconds. This can stack up to... 10 times and for 9%, which means that's an extra 90% damage for nothing. In terms of the hero stats, I'm going to give you a choice. So I definitely would recommend crit damage and crit chance. And then I went into the HP and the ward. You could go into spell cooldown instead. I preferred the health, but spell cooldown will allow you to get more hydras back onto the field if need be. But we really didn't lack damage at this point. Then onto the gear, and I don't exaggerate when I say that I spent most of the time in the Chaos Chamber with level 16 guns. Here is still my level 16 spell that I am still using now because A, I haven't found a higher level of the exact same spell, and B, 
This spell spawns three hydras from one pull, one hold, and it's putting hydras on the ground, and that's what it's all about. In terms of the weapons, we have a level 40 blue Feria here. Feria is the key. They can spawn companions. This one is a gun with wings, which will scale off any gun damage passives that you might have. The next one is a pixie, which will spawn and scale off any ability damage that you will have. And then this one is just a standard Hydra, which is basically any kind of companion damage you, you want. So if you've got class mods that aren't quite perfect, you're still getting damage multipliers off all of these. And you can mix and match the elements however you may see fit. Now, I do recommend the Pixie to use as the main one. And the reason for this is because they fly around, can go through walls, and they do a ton of damage. They scale off ability damage. The enchantment here I rolled first time, believe it or not, and it was absolutely perfect for what I wanted. I can't see myself changing this unless I get an absolutely perfectly roll chaotic version. Then, as with Wonderlands, it's all about leaning into what you're trying to do. So our premise here is get as many companions on the field as possible and buff those percentages as big as possible so our melee also can get hydras down on the field our rings buff companion damage they're not perfect by any stretch but remember this build you don't need perfect gear and the other ring slot again is companion damage action skill duration because our enchantment is boosted when action skill is active which is why we went for the blizzard that is the only action skill that will stay up for the longest possible time with Spore Warden and with Graveborn. Then I've tried this shield out here, which actually does spawn another companion. But I'll be completely honest with you, we kill things so fast, not many of them actually get and hit us. The class mod, as you can see here, is by no means perfect. We have two points which will buff our companion damage, and we have companion damage in the slot. We also have spell damage here, which I said before. Things scale off spell damage, some scale off ability damage. So it's all about mixing them. Then we have our absolute winner, our level 16 spell. As I said before, you hold it, it will spawn three hydras plus the additional hydra of dark magic hydra that might spawn as well, which has a 60% chance. And finally, I have a chaotic level 40 um, amulet here, which has loot look, status effect damage, dark magic damage, which we're doing all the time and graveborn power as well so we've got whenever you cast a spell it reduces your remaining action skill cooldown time and while your action skill call is on cooldown spell damage is increased by 30 percent so we're getting damage either way we look at it or cooldown if we're already with our action skill on cooldown so as i said before you don't need perfect gear to do a ton of damage with this build it works exceptionally brilliant for mobs and it also works with bosses so the play style is pretty simple. You run in, you fire all your hydras down, and then you fire off pixies in the air, and you're done. Make sure that if you've got your skills up, your action skills go in, if it's on cooldown, throw more pixies, and just run around the map throwing pixies in the air. It is a literally as simple as that. The pixies and the scaling damage will do the rest. The more hydras and the more pixies on the field, the better. That's it. If you're fighting a boss, then what you want to do is not tell your companions who to aim at. You actually want them to hit the ads now and again, because we that will, will then activate our kill skills, meaning that when the enemies die, it will spawn another Dark Hydra, which will increase our damage even further. It's about momentum and keeping that damage formula rolling as we're damaging the boss. You will absolutely delete bosses, particularly as most of these bosses are surrounded by ads. The only thing that you do need to look out for is sometimes you might run out of ammo because you're throwing TDOs. But as long as you run over the bodies of where they've died, you will pick up enough ammo to keep your Chaos Chamber running again and again and again. So there you have it, guys. That is Hydraborn. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a thank you in the comments, the like button, whatever it is you want to do. Or join us over on Twitch. We now stream six times a week. And otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip.